Howdy ho. Another day in paradise, my friends. So uh, I think I've been on a selling kick. I don't know if you're listening to these in any particular order or randomly, but if you're listening to these in order, it seems like my podcast, my YouTubes, no matter what I do, I'm talking about selling. So I'm just going to stick with it. And, um, you know, you all know I listen to calls daily, listen to recorded calls from clients and clinics I'm working with. And I also do um, secret callers. And what I want to share with you today really comes out. And I think um, probably really came obvious, became obvious to me during my secret callers. Then I noticed it in the listening to the calls. And it's this, your, your team, everywhere I go, we don't sell. I don't like selling. I hate selling. We don't sell here. And I'm like, that's cool because you're all over selling right? In dead air. The fact that you think you don't sell, the fact that you push back on selling is this, is the fact that you don't understand what a good conversation and good phone call and appropriate phone call sounds like. And by the way, it's selling, right? And so these people always say, we don't sell. I don't sell. No, I hate that. No, I just care about people. It's like you just wasted their time and oversold them. So the fact that you don't believe in selling, the fact that you won't learn about selling, the skills, the objectives, the um, attributes of selling lead you to be the bad salesperson you claim you hate. I want you to replay that. I hate sales. Everybody thinks it's dirty and will tell you all these bad experiences. When someone defines and outlines their bad experience, it's always the shit I hear. They didn't listen to me. Hmm. Interesting, right? They didn't ask me what I needed. Hmm. Interesting. They talked a lot about themselves. Hmm. Interesting. They just sounded like they were checking off boxes. Hmm. Interesting sounded like a script. They were just reading from a script. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Ask someone, why do you hate cells? Well, it's a bad, no, don't even ask them why they hate cells. Ask them what, right. Ask them why or how they would define a bad sales person. Or how would you explain to me a bad sales experience? And everybody always wants to say pushy. What's that mean? Well, again, we're going to get back to they talked about themselves. They didn't ask about me. They just kept telling me and kept talking to me and kept telling me things instead of asking me questions. Now, I want you to play all that back, like that last 20 seconds, and think about everything your front desk does when they manage a new patient call and you tell them to get people scheduled. They run through a checklist. They want a script. Yeah, and you know what? You know, there's a lot of things that spurred this conversation today, but one of them is I've had like two or three people ask me for a script this week. And I'm like, I can give you a script for the same amount of money, by the way. And you will get zero results with it because it'll just leave you where you are. I can type out this whole conversation in a script, right? All the training, and it isn't going to resonate the same as the way, right? I typically take people through this. Because with a script, you have no context and you have no awareness and you don't care about the person on the other side of the phone. So again, all these attributes, all these things, all these descriptions come back to what you are doing currently on your first phone call. Your team is doing. And remember, I don't blame the team members. I blame you. You didn't train them. You didn't tell them. You didn't help them. You left them with no guidance. And you said, get people scheduled. So their goal is to go through a checklist, get people on the schedule and get off the phone. Here's the other thing that happens during that call that drives me batty. Here's what happens to me when I secret call. Is this talking at people? Let me tell you, right? Hi, my name's Jerry. I have low back pain. I want to get scheduled. Great, Jerry. Uh, we can help you, right? You have your doctor's referral, you have your insurance. Even if not that, it's just like, you know, some other general stuff. Let me get some things from you. And then how do you find out about us, 
right? And great, um, you know, I can get you on the schedule with someone with, who helps people with backs. And this is how we help people with low back pain. And they rip off all this stuff, if at all, right? And they just start to spew all this stuff about how we're going to help you. And all you know is I have low back pain. Low back pain is not a problem to be solved. And I did this forever, my friends, right? <clears throat> People call and start the conversation with how much is it or, or tell me a little bit about your physical therapy. <clears throat> if I called your clinic this afternoon and said, hi, my name is Jared. I'm thinking about getting scheduled. Tell me about how you can help me. Tell me about your physical therapy. I will guarantee you as sure as the sun comes up that if I collected $1 for everybody who just went into a spill about what you do and handed over $10 or even $100 for everybody who said, well, hold up, what do you need from us? I would still come out net positive at the end of all the calls. When someone calls your office and says, you know, I really don't know what's going on. I'm just calling around to see how you can help us. The next thing that must happen is a question. And it is that spewing of information that actually is overselling. And I hear this a lot on the calls. So, you know, we give out that caring vibe and I ask you some stuff and I tell you how bummed I am about your low back pain without knowing your goals or anything else and how long it's been going on. And then as I schedule you, I proceed to work my way through the checklist that tells you all the things that'll happen on your first visit and treatments and everything without knowing any iota about what I expect or what I need from you. Because even telling you I have low back pain doesn't tell you what I need or want from you. And in the midst of not asking me what I need or want, you then proceed to go through the checklist and just tell me a bunch of shit. And that telling the bunch of shit is overselling. I've used this example in the past. I said, you know, there, there's two ways these conversations go. I'm either undersold or I'm oversold. And there is no in between typically, right? And the undersold is basically just first name, last name, date of birth, get me on the schedule for low back pain and hang up. I'm like, Okay, all right. That's a commodity that's scheduled for physical therapy for low back pain. And I can get that anywhere, right? The other side, the oversold is not much different, right? You maybe listen to my story, yet you never address my wants or needs. So, so even when I share my story, what's interesting, if I share my story with you and embedded in there is the problem I want solved, and you never point out that those are the things you can help me with, then when you start spewing all the things you're going to do for me, you're just overselling, right? When you start list, listing how different you are, but I don't even have context for how you can help me, let alone be different. I want you to think about that. If I share my story, my low back pain story, and you hear I hurt myself at the gym and I can't go back to the gym and I'm having pain in the morning when I wake up, and your team just goes straight into, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Let's get you on the schedule. And then tells me, again, all the things I'm going to get, what's going to happen during the evaluation and everything, without ever acknowledging that you can get me back to those things or ask me if those things are important to me, you're overselling. You did nothing. By the way, this is what's interesting. Even if I share that story, you did nothing to decrease my uncertainty that you are the best fit for me, right? This is so interesting. This, this lack of acknowledgement and lack of, lack of repeating back and gaining clarity. And we might even call it empathy. I think empathy is important, but it's not to me. Being empathetic is not the most important thing on this phone call. Listening is. So Jerry, what I heard you say is this. You can't go to the gym. You have pain in the morning. Is that correct? Yes. We have experts who can help you with that. Boom. Uncertainty going through the floor. Certainty increasing. Now, when you spew all these things you can do for me, you keep saying, and we have found that stuff helps people get back to the gym, right? But what happens is I share this story and people ask me consistently, this is why I say your team's overselling. People ask me more times than not, right? Well, tell me what's going on. Well, I hurt my back at the gym and nobody ever acknowledged. Nobody has. I'm zero for whatever. Zero for all the secret callers I've done is nobody ever says, well, Jerry, geez, it sounds like the gym is important to you. Would that be, would I be correct? Yes. 
sounds like getting out of the pain is pain in the morning is important to you. Is that correct? Yes. I'm just the expert for you. Boom. Now, now you don't have to oversell. You know why? Because you just took the problem I need solved and you acknowledged it and you said, I can help you. Now I want to know more. And the other example, when I share that, you just start spewing me. I'm like, is this for me? Now, anything you say next is for me. Without that acknowledgement, you are overselling. With the acknowledgement, you're not selling. You are, but right? It's going to feel like a conversation. And the reason people hate selling is because they don't know the right questions to ask. And they don't know how to manage a conversation. And they don't know how to take control of the conversation. The worst thing you can do is say, share your story with me or tell me what's going on. When someone says, tell me what's going on, or, hey, you know, I'd love to hear your story. That tells me you don't know how to sell. And you're going to spew everything back at me. And then you talk generally about the physical therapist and you talk generally about the business. And all the time I'm going, hmm, I hear you. And I'm still wondering if all this is for me. And then we hang up and I schedule and I end up sleeping on it and call you back and canceling because I found a place that made it about me. So again, I, I want you to right, understand that this overselling occurs because you don't understand the selling process, the person doing it. And again, have they been trained? Were they asked anything else? It's not 100% on them, right? If you, if you hire someone and tell them to get people scheduled, they will oversell and they will, they will either oversell or they'll check boxes. There is no in-between. And both of them are fucked for you, your patients, and your business. I should say you're fucked. All right. So the fact that I hate selling, I don't like selling is too pushy and everything else is leading your team to oversell. And that happens more times than the box checkers. The box checkers happen, but it's almost, I've shared this before. It's almost easier to move through that because you just hang up and go, okay, whatever. Just like everybody else. The overselling, I've had it happen to me. It's the weirdest thing. You're just like, ah, I just, just move forward. It's a weird, weird thing to be on the other side of that. As a secret caller, as someone tuned into it, it still impacts me in the same way. Because I'm thinking about everybody calling to schedule and it's just like, you're, 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 you're talking too much. And by the way, if that comes from me, we got a big problem here. I love to talk. But it just is... It is the weirdest thing because when I'm in these conversations, and by the way, when I call the schedule, I use stuff I've had trouble with. So when people start just building and building about what you can do for me without ever acknowledging anything more in my back pain, I'm just sitting there the whole time going, what is this about? What is this for? So think about someone else calling and has zero experience with PT, with anything, right? Getting help. And so the overselling where people think, well, I told them everything we can do for them. I'm like, yeah, that was a mistake. It's worse than the underselling. So the key here is just, right, acknowledge that this is a sales process and acknowledge that there are steps to be taken, right? And questions to be asked. This is the beautiful part. I'm like, all you got to do is ask like five questions and we're done. Listen for the answer, acknowledge that answer, use that answer the way you would. This is the other thing I asked someone the other day. If someone you know and love and care about is sitting across from you and goes, I need some help with some low back pain, how would you talk to them? You'd ask them lots of questions. You'd find out what they need. You'd say, I think I have a place that's a fit for you. It's the same damn thing, right? So own the fact that there is a process here and it is a process that is made up of better questions and listening and then acknowledging. If you take that step first, you'll stop being the box checker for sure, but you'll stop overselling. And once you tell me what you need, I can take that same exact information that I'm spewing all the time at people and apply it directly to you. And now it's not just spewing information. It is incredible to listen to these calls when you realize all this. Let me tell you how we can help you. And I've wanted to stop people and go, you haven't even asked me what my problem is. So whatever you say next is a fucking shot in the dark, is a flip of the coin. It's Russian roulette. I love the analogy Russian roulette. 
because then I go, oh, okay. And then I go, yeah, let's get on the schedule. Yeah, Thursday works. And then I call and cancel or a no-show. Yeah, I didn't think, you know, the money was the objection. I'm like, because they didn't know what they were going to buy. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to show up. Yeah, because you didn't tell them why they should show up. Right? How do we expect them to connect these dots? You're connecting dots for them. And if nothing else going, what do you want to do next? I've actually started training people. I love this line. I said, if you get to the end, of, right before your scheduling, if you're like, man, I'm not sure about this conversation, say, what would you like to do next? Because they'll tell you the uncertainty. Now you can meet it. But if you're just sitting there checking boxes and making sure you spew all the information, you're never going to hear that. And you're constantly going to blame everybody else. One of my favorite things, nobody wants to pay, nobody wants to pay out of pocket for their physical therapy. They don't want to use their insurance. I'm like, but you've never asked. You've never given them any reason to is the other thing. So this overselling is the fact that you don't understand how to sell, right? There's a process to it. It's, it's questions, it's listening, it's acknowledgement. And by the way, it shortens the phone calls. Yes, you heard that correct. It shortens the phone calls. I've done some secret callers recently where it was eight and 10 minutes. And I was like, wow, that was a long time to check some boxes. It really was. It was all box checking. They knew nothing about me. At the end of it, I was like, wow, that was eight minutes. It was like nothing. And when I looked down on my notes, I'm like, nothing happened on that call. And you're worried about adding in some questions and letting people tell you the direction to go. So you can go, we can do that for you. I have just a person for you. They're free next week, Thursday, 1030 in the morning or 130 in the afternoon. When would you like to schedule with them? Right? That call will go a boatload quicker. Cool. Stop overselling. And the way to stop overselling is to learn the process of selling. It's going to benefit your team, your patients, and your business. Cheers.